All right, how you doing? Today I wanna have a look at some generative art that I'm working on. It's a concept called Kaleidoscope Rings. Now it's interacting with the mouse X and Y position. And you can see we've kind of got three different rings working here and they're just kind of flowing about and looking all trippy and cool. Now this was inspired by a billboard that I saw for the San Francisco Exploratorium. There's just using colors and different rings, but uh, this is kind of close to what I'm, my final vision. And I think it's a really great way to practice radial distributions in P5. So let's have a look. Hey there, Web Bay. Okay, so I'm just working in the P5 editor today, so we're just gonna talk through the code and not do anything too much more complex than that. Now, anytime I'm working with radial distributions, I like to set the angle mode to degrees rather than radians, just because I find degrees a lot easier to work with. And then down in draw, we wanna start, uh, put a circle on the page, so we'll have ellipse, and we'll set to zero, zero, and something like 20, or sorry, 50, pixel radius. Now we can see it's up here at the top left and that is not ideal, but it is fine. We can use the translate function and we'll set this to 200, 200, which I chose 200 because it's the middle of 400. Now let's actually just go ahead and update this to window width. That needs to be a capital W and this to window height. And so now our canvas is gonna be a lot better. And we'll set translate to window width divide by two and this will be window height divided by two. Okay, and now we have, when we're drawing our ellipse at point zero zero, it's still ending up in the center here. Now I wanna make this, uh, let's see, I wanna make a circle of circles basically. So one way I can do that is by using a for loop and we'll set the X and Y coordinates using cosine and sine. So something like, uh, let's say four, let angle equal to zero, and then angle is gonna be less than 360 degrees, right? And then we'll say angle plus equals 10 each iteration. Oops, 10. And open, close some curly brackets here. Why are those all the way over there? Let's do this. All right. And we'll just drag our ellipse right in here. And now let's, let's see if I just said angle, then we're gonna get kind of like a horizontal line, right? So let's, take this as a parameter for our cosine and sine functions. So we'll say const x equals cosine of angle and const y equals sine of angle. And now we can set our ellipse x and y values right here. Let me space this out nicely. And I'll just have it tidy code just so everything makes sense here. Okay, great. So we can kind of see that they're lapping right on top of each other here. Now this is because cosine and sine are just gonna return a value between negative one and one. If I went in console log x, then we'll just see that it's not very big at all, right? And yeah, it's going to go between negative one and one here. So let me clear that. And we'll get rid of this console log. So as long as we multiply this by some sort of magnitude value, then we'll be good to go. So let's set a magnitude of 100 or rather than say 100, let's say, let me stop, I'm getting some lag here for some reason. Say window width uh, divide by four. And for this, we'll say window height divide by four. So we're just adding some magnitude to this thing. And it's not gonna be a perfect circle, it's more oblong here because you know our canvas is not a perfect circle. So let's just use window width here instead. And we should get a more perfect circle. Okay, and you can see because of how P5 does draw things, like the very this will be the very first one that's drawn, two, three, four, five, six, and we'll get 36 of these. And then this one's gonna lap, overlap on top. And then there's not really much we can do about it because of the draw order and how things are rendered in P5. So I'm just gonna leave that as it is. Now, let's wonder like, how could we draw multiple of these on the screen or something like that? But before I do that, I'm actually gonna say no stroke here to get rid of the stroke. And I kind of like the fill as white, but let's change the background to something dark because everybody loves dark mode. So, okay, actually I did like the stroke. Let's set a stroke weight equal to two. And where do we get there? And let's set the stroke color to the same as the background. And that might look kind of nice. Oh, I kind of like that. Okay, actually before we draw more circles, let's take a look at how to make this interact with the mouse X and mouse Y. So something we could do is we can just start honestly plugging it in wherever we want. Let's try this, mouse Y plus angle and save. And now we can see that we're getting this really cool rotation effect 
as we move the mouse around. So pretty easy to get something highly interactive. And something else we could do is we could vary the size with the mouse position as well. So we know that we set the amplitude here. Now let's, um, how do we want to do this? Let's just say plus mouse x. We'll just add it. I was thinking about multiplying it, but I think I want to start with that. Oh, that's <laughs> totally wrong. We definitely don't want that. Uh, so let's, you know what it is, is that we are, oops, we need to wrap these in parentheses. Because it wasn't affecting the amplitude in that case, it was adding to the x and the y coordinate. So that's why that was kind of going all over the place. But we play now, and now we get this cool kind of sizing effect. But we can see it's getting way too big for the canvas. So we need to dial that down a little bit. So let's take this and divide it also by 4, and divide it by 4. And I think it starts out a little too large, so let's divide this by 10. Divide that by 10. So it starts out pretty small, and then it gets quite a bit bigger down here at the bottom right. And I think this is looking really cool. So... Something we can do immediately now, we know how to draw an ellipse, right? This is basically our code for drawing an ellipse. So if I say, let's make a function and call it draw ring, open close, and we'll define that down here as a function, draw ring. It's like we're drawing, but we're drawing a ring. Amazing. And we'll just cut that and paste it down here. And play and we're still getting the exact same code but now I can loop over this and call it multiple times. So we could say for let i equal zero i less than num rings i plus plus open close curly brackets and we'll bring this right up in there. Oh bring this right up in there. And now we haven't defined num rings anywhere so we need to go ahead and do that. We can do that just right outside the for loop. So we'll say let num rings. Actually, let's do it. We don't want to do it in the draw function. Let's just do it outside of everything. And we'll call this const num rings. I like to put kind of the editable properties up at the top, the constants, you know. So we'll say that's three. And now we can draw three rings, but of course they're all being drawn in the same place. So we call this translate function to translate our coordinate system. There's also a rotate function that we can rotate our coordinate system. So let's do that, and then, I don't know, we'll rotate it by 60 degrees. And now if we hit play, what do we get? Now we're starting to get these really cool rings all kind of uh, superimposed on top of each other and interacting with the mouse. So super cool there. Now the other thing you might want to start playing with is color. I thought it might be cool to make some of these fade into the darkness. Um, now it's not going to be perfect because we'll still have some of the circles white and some of them black, so they'll end up overlapping each other. But what we could do, let's just set the background to be completely black, so zero. And if we play, then this is, yep, so that's black now. And we'll set the stroke to zero as well. And what we can do is we want to rotate the hue as well. So that's going to be down in the drawing. We're going to say fill equal to like, you know, zero or 30. And so the way we can do that is we know... We're basically using angle here. So, and that's going from zero to 360. So we can just fill by the angle. And now we're getting that kind of cool, like grayscale effect. And if I start moving the mouse, then we see this thing's almost looking like a snake kind of wrapping in on itself, which is really cool. Um, so that's great. And then the last thing I might do is I might like make a video of this and put it on my Instagram because I'm trying to work on building out my creative coding portfolio. And so rather than have the mouse, which I can actually get rid of the mouse in post-processing pretty easily, but let's go ahead and change this to the frame count. And now the frame count is just a count of each frame within the draw function, right? So that's frame count and change this to frame count. And we'll change this to, no, this one to frame count and this one to frame count. And let's see what we get. So it's spinning, we're watching it, but of course frame count is the same and when we had mouse X and mouse Y, we were kind of modulating it at different places on the screen. So everything's overlapping, which is not ideal. But if we just take, let's say frame count, we'll divide one of them by two here. Um, and this one will be by two instead of by four. And let's see what we get. All right, I'm really liking that. 
Now, the other thing to think about, like, obviously, I'm just going to pull a short clip and put it on Instagram or whatever. But the frame count is just going to keep getting larger and larger and larger. So once we might want to think about, like, once everything is off the screen, do we reset the frame count? Or maybe you just need this for a set amount of time, right? But if I, it's kind of cool because like the middles are all coming together and then it's going to hopefully happen again. Yep, there it goes. Amazing. All right, let's go ahead and stop and play. And again, thanks for watching. You know, I'm just working on this concept piece and wanted to show you a couple things that I learned along the way. So I may check a clonable for this down in the description below. But if you like that, be sure to check out the clonable so that I'll have something that's working within Webflow. But just want to show you the code. And of course, as always, the obligatory like and subscribe and see you in the next one. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.